we have another semifinal hosted in the Pacific Northwest. This one is OL Rain versus Kansas City Current at Lumen Field in Seattle, Washington. This one also kicking off on Sunday, October 23rd at 7.30 p.m. Eastern. Catch all the action on CBS Sports. I'm excited for this one, Lisa. I'm excited am- for them all, but I'm excited for this one, too. I'm very excited for this one. Um, it's it's the later match between these two, but they're all on the West Coast. Um, and, I mean, this, this is a big competition. I mean, there's a lot of players and, and people involved because both Laura Harvey and Matt Potter, Laura Harvey, oh, well, Rain head coach and Potter, Kansas City head coach, were nominated for Coach of the Year. Um, as well as Casey Stoney for the San Diego side. So it's this is a coaching battle. Like right off the bat, I think that it has to be a little bit of a coaching battle. A coach with so much experience in Laura Harvey um, winning the Shield three times, but never winning a championship. And then you've got a, someone like Matt Potter who came in and just turned the current club around and, and what they were able to do last year to this year. I think it's a coaching battle and it comes down to that. I love that. Uh, Listen, I'm excited for the coaching battle that we could potentially see uh, between San Diego and and Portland. I do wonder if this game, not just with the coaches, but if it could come down to a goalkeeper's battle. I'm absolutely looking in between the pipes for this one. On one end for Kansas City, you're going to have A.D. French holding things down for Kansas City. For Ola Rain, you're going to have Fallon Tullis Joyce. These are two keepers nominated for goalkeeper of the year. And when I'm looking at the goalkeeper, I'm also looking at general defensive shape for these two teams. I know we've also looking ahead to back lines, bumping up a little bit right in front of those goalkeepers, uh, you know, for Ola Rain. You've got Alana Cook, Sam Hyatt. I've loved that duo so far this year for OL Reign. You, Alana Cook, also nominated for Defender of the Year, alongside teammate Sophia Huerta. Now, I'm going to be looking at the shapes of these teams very, very early on. I think we've seen a, a common thread for for OL Reign. Uh, you know, if Sophia Huerta is, is getting higher up the pitch, they tend to find some success is Kansas City going to try to combat that with their own shape and their wingbacks? Right? Are things going to get tight and won and or lost on the wings between these two sides? But just looking back at some of their regular season matchups, it's why I'm leaning into uh, you know the defensive shapes and the organized shapes and, and, and the goalkeepers in this match because the last time these two teams went head-to-head, Lisa, these were not blowout matches between these two sides. We're talking about two very narrow wins, 1-0. They both split the regular season meetings. I anticipate this one to be a pretty nervy, maybe kind of close, intense uh, semifinal. I agree completely. I think it's going to be really, really close between these two sides. Um, It's been really back and forth between, like, the matchup, as you just talked about. With the five times that they've met in league play, Every single match has been a shutout. OL Reign winning 3-0, 2-0, and then 1-0. And Kansas City having two wins at, at 1-0 against OL Reign. So the, as you said, goalkeeper battle for sure. It's, it's almost like as the game gets going and, and which team can attack a little bit more and, and keep going at things. Um, Kansas City will be without Claire Lavogé. We, we don't have availability reports yet, but that's a player that went down. Kansas City's last match against Houston um, ended up going off the pitch and, and forcing Potter to make an earlier substitution than he definitely would have liked. Uh, Lavoge was seen back on the sidelines with her teammates and on crutches. So um, unlikely that we'll see Lavoge. I'm, I'm just going to put that out there. She's probably not playing in this one. Um, but I, I think that when you look at that Kansas City versus Houston match, um, you have to look at the shots because knowing in the back of your mind that the five times – uh, O.L. Reign and The Current have met. They have been shutouts. And Kansas City is coming off a match against Houston in which Houston outshot Kansas City 20 shots to Kansas City's six shots. So Kansas City, although getting on the board first in, in the opening five minutes or so, that was off a penalty kick um, in which Houston had conceded two in their, their last two matches. So something that Houston was struggling with. Um, I don't really foresee O.L. Reign uh, conceding a penalty kick early in this match to Kansas City. Not when you've got two defender of the 
the year nominees in your back line with Sofia Huerta um, and Alana Cook back there. But hey, you never know. Anything can happen in this one. But that that PK changed the game for Kansas City and it yeah. gave them that, that little bit of a jolt that then they could keep going. And it wasn't until the 10th minute of stoppage time that Kansas City is able to get the win over Houston. Um, for OL Reign, it's it's a similar story to Portland in the sense that they haven't played since October 1st. It's been a long break for them. Yeah. Um, and that game, though, was a big game for them. It was against Orlando Pride. Uh, they OL Reign wins it 3-0, and they get their all three goals in the first 30 minutes of this match. And then they just settle out. They end up winning the Shield after it. The third time OL Reign and Laura Harvey have won the Shield, but they have not. OL Reign, despite winning the Shield for those three years, they are looking for their first playoff win since 2015. OL Reign has a four-game losing streak in the postseason. That's tied for the longest oh, postseason. Yeah losing streak in NWSL history. It's almost as if this team is cursed and they know it, right? Laura Harvey wants nothing more than an NWSL championship. That is why she was brought back there. That's why she wanted to go back to OL Reign so she could do just that. She got a piece of the puzzle winning the shield with this team, but now can they do it? And this is going to be the biggest test for them. There's a lot of pressure for this OL Reign side and they definitely feel it. Now, I also think this is a team that really, really likes pressure. When you look at who they've got, someone like a Jess Fishlock, Ming Rapino, Rose Lavelle, they, they thrive under that pressure. Um, Balser, uh, Bethany Balser and Megan Rapino, they lead OL Reign in seven goals both this year. Uh, th for Balser, it's just the third consecutive year that she has led this team in goals scored throughout it. Um, and then you have to look between the sticks because Fallon tells Joyce, OL Reign's only Iron Woman this year. Uh, nine clean sheets, only 19 goals against the stingiest defense in the NWSL. And it, it really starts with this, this young goalkeeper um, that's playing in, in her first year in the NWSL. I, I think when you said it, Sandra, that it's going to be a goalkeeper battle between A.D. French for the current and Fallon Tulls Joyce for O.L. Reign that you hit it right on the head because it, whichever goalkeeper can come up with more saves, frankly, like French coming off of a big game against Houston, four saves in that match to Jane Campbell's one. Um, so Kansas City was put under pressure from from Houston. So they understand how to kind of battle that. But between these two sides with rain and Kansas City, I think I think that like the want and the desire is there, too. Right. That we know that this Kansas City side is just so jazzed up to be here. They're just like the happiest team <laughs> watching them play. Honestly, they're just like happy go lucky, happy to be here, working hard, working incredibly hard. But yeah. they are just so like proud of themselves and where they've come and, and why they're here, that it's that belief that almost carries a team. Whereas when I look at an OL Rain side, it's almost a bit grittier. It's a bit like we deserve this. We've been here. We've been fighting for it. We're the better team. We won the shield. Like let's go out there and get it and be like this dirty, like gritty, not dirty in terms of that, but just like gritty hard nosed team um, that it's going to make it a very interesting battle. I think we'll see different styles of soccer on either side of the pitch. Yeah, for sure. I think it's also, listen, we talked about it a little bit with, with Portland and San Diego. I think it's also going to you know, it's also going to come down to, to who's who's missing or who's uh, available to, to this this game as well. I think, you know, Level J is going to be a huge loss for this Kansas City side going into to the semifinal. We, you know, we can't act mm -hmm. like that's um, not a a grim scenario for the team. But you know, the the return of, of somebody like a Desiree Scott, you know, her availability uh, potentially for this match, I think, could uh, you know perhaps even things out a little bit in, in that middle third for, for Kansas city. Um, so I'm sort of eager to see uh, what her availability looks like uh, was uh, Scott was unable to participate in that uh, quarterfinal match against uh, Kansas city. And obviously Kansas city, uh, the winners in, in that one. So um, I, I don't know if you can actually say like, Oh, like they desperately, uh, you know, missed her, her presence. But I, I will say that, having somebody like a Desiree Scott will only add to your team's chances moving forward. But um, looking between the two teams, I do wonder, you know, OL Reign is in a little bit of a similar uh, situation as they were this time last year. They, they finished as one of the top two seeds in 2021. They earned a buy, a direct buy straight to the semifinals, uh, you know, 
chatting with, with Jess Fishlock around this time last year, you know, saying that, that that was something that the team wanted to, to do. They wanted to get that bye week. Uh, you know, older players like Megan Rapino saying like, hey, like if we can get the extra time, like we'd appreciate it. Um, but, yeah. you know, looking at this, I do wonder if, if something like the extra time off was a little bit of a disruption for that team at that point in 2021. Is that going to sort of rear its head again? In, in 2022, um, they were going up against a Washington Spirit side that just sort of were chasing their own, a bit of their own destiny, right? But that they ended up falling short in, in that semifinal. Which honestly gives me Kansas City vibes this year, like chasing a bit of their own destiny, like, yeah. like trying to get after it and, and go. They're a team that, like, can do it. I don't know. I'm getting like similar vibes from Washington 2021 for this Kansas City side in 20. Yeah, no, I, I, I'm, I'm with you. That's why I'm, I'm bringing it up on the pot. I'm just kind of like, gosh, I do wonder if, like, uh, you know, if that is a little bit of, of something that the rain side is going to be working on and, and trying to, to, to look forward and, and move past. I will say this: um, it's a different scenario in that this team is actually going to be able to host. Mm-hmm. their semifinal right Th- this was something else that 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 worked against them a little bit last year the the kind of merry-go-round of where they could possibly host their semifinal game there's going to be a bit less of movement in that sense you know there, there was a, a little bit of chaotic energy around trying to figure out where and when they were going to be able to to host their semifinal, but that's not something that they have to worry about in 2022. The rain know that they are going to host the number uh, five seed at Lumen Field in Seattle, Washington, and they are going to play in front of their home community uh, in this semifinal. I think it adds a layer of security it adds a layer of confidence for this team that did earn the bye week compared to last year in 2021 i'm looking yeah. for play again looking for the players who during this time on the rain side were able to participate in international windows imagine that they are going to take what they got out of those minutes in the international window and bring that into their trainings and preparation for this semifinal against Kansas City. I am absolutely thrilled uh, at, at even the idea of an NWSL semifinal being hosted at Lumen Field for all rain. It's going to be very excited. We've been talking a lot about some of the playoff crowds that have been showing up for the NWSL postseason. And listen, all rain are, are, are one of these teams that are, are making a push to have a really good environment, um, you know, at, at, during this event, they're really making it an event of things. So I, I'm going to be looking. Um, yes, I think uh, again, people are going to look at, at big names and big players and sort of circle those players and sort of, you know, anticipate big performances from them. I think if you're looking at Oil Rain, you're gonna you're gonna say, oh, Megan Rapino, Jess Fishlock, you know, mm-hmm. these are the original gangsters, right? These are the OGs of this team. Want to have them have big uh, big games for, for this team. You're looking at Kansas city. You could say, you know, somebody like a Lola Bata or somebody like, you know, an Adriana, uh, Adriana French to, to have strong games for, for Kansas city. But I'm looking for those younger players to come in and have an impact and sort of steal this game, right? Sort of steal it and take it and make it theirs. If, if I'm OL rain, you want to have uh, strong games from, from Sam Hyatt, you know, who's been putting together a, a very strong, consistent season on that back line for this all rain side. I'm looking at Bethany Balser to continue her form into the postseason. You know, what's the availability of, of Jordan uh, Hidema? Like, is she going to be able to provide what she has been providing for this team during a late second half surge of the season? for OL rain, right? So these players, the players who have only been with the rain for X amount of seasons to sort of who are the younger ones of this, of this group and to sort of 
go on and take that next, next step and sort of say, yes, we've arrived, right? We're the next wave of all reign and we will be the ones sort of continuing this legacy. Um, so I'm looking for those players to have an impact, Lisa. Um, and it's why I'm going with the reign to win this yes. semifinal. Yes, Sandra, I am right there with you. I'm I'm predicting a Cascadia rivalry NWSL championship between Portland and OL Reign. Um, I, I do think that OL Reign is going to get the upper hand over Kansas City. Like with the shot production that OL Reign is able to put up, the quantity and the quality of it that we've seen consistently throughout this year, I think it's most impressive um, from this OL Reign side. And, and it, I mean, like, it comes down to like areas of the pitch, right? Like where can Kansas city thrive in those areas? Where can all rain thrive in those areas? And I think centrally for a well rain, they thrive with switching the ball from one side to the other. Their, their central players are just so key for how Laura Harvey wants to build and wants to play with this team. And matching up against whether it's a Desi Scott in that defensive six for Kansas city or an Alex Luera, I think that they'll, they'll put pressure on them, but with the imbalance that, O.L. Reign has against this Kansas City side, the midfield battle will be won by O.L. Reign. Now, if Kansas City can attack the wide spaces, get the ball into the wide areas, send crosses in, that'll be a different story. But the 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 like amount of pressure that O.L. Reign puts on teams, I think that they're just going to get it a little bit more. I think Laura Harvey um, matching up this coaching battle against a Matt Potter just has the experience up her hand and has like the knowledge of this postseason game. Um, where as Potter, he's doing it right. Like I, we talked about the other day, I honestly think he should be coach of the year in this season. But I think in this specific battle that Laura Harvey could out coach Potter in this situation. And that's perhaps what it's going to come down to. And, and those game changers not coming off the bench as in the San Diego Portland match, but who starts the game and who starts stronger for these two sides. Um, yeah. I have all rain winning it with you. Wow. We're going, we're going the same right. for both Portland. We'll we both see. have Portland winning. We both have all rain winning. I'm really excited for this weekend. Look, I am too. We'll see. We'll see how our, uh, how our picks shake out uh, when we do the recap, but uh, exciting time as the NWSL semifinals are finally here. You can catch all of the action on CBS Sports Network Sunday, October 23rd. You've got Portland Thorns versus San Diego Wave at 5 p.m. Eastern and Owell Rain versus Kansas City Current at 7.30 p.m. Eastern. Make sure you tune in to all the action. Thank you all so much for joining us and listening to Attacking Third. 